Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my kitchen. It is a freezing cold day outside today. It's gusty, really a gale is picking up again and it's pushing against the windows and really the windows are shaking a little bit. So I was letting know, I'm not going outside today. This is going to be a lovely indoors day. I just have a fire going in the fireplace now to make it nice and toasty inside. Because when the wind is so cold and strong, the house colds down, honestly, with a blink of an eye. It was, I think, 16.5 degrees Celsius in here in the morning. And I was like, oh no, that is literally, I don't, I don't need to have it like too warm in the house, but that is just a notch too cold. So now I'm making sure that it's lovely and warm. Alfie's sitting on the couch, looking out of the window, hoping for the DHL guy to arrive so she can bark at somebody. But what we're gonna do today, and you might already see it here on the kitchen counter, there is a brown box. And for those of you who follow my channel already for quite a while, you might remember that this is a box where I'm storing my dahlias and gladioli. And this is exactly what I want to look at today. I just want to check how are the gladioli and the dahlias looking. And some of the dahlias I'm going to start potting up already. And this is something that I did last year for the first time ever. Because when you start your dahlias earlier, you will be rewarded with beautiful bloom early. And who doesn't want that? So for those of you who have a greenhouse or a cold frame or a poly, or a poly tunnel, um, you've very much in luck because that works even better, I think, but I don't have any of those things. So what I do is I find a lovely area, probably in the bathroom, I need to see where I store them. Um, somewhere light, which is good, nice, light and warm, so that they really have the ability to root in well and start. And I think within two latest three weeks, I'm going to be able to see the first shoots appearing. And this is very exciting, something I absolutely love to do. And I'm not only going to put in some dahlias, I also received a parcel from uh, Farmer Gracie a while ago, if you might remember. And I had some cannas and one dahlia in there as well. So also intent on potting up the cannas to make sure that I have a really beautiful display very early this year. So hope you're excited about today's video. Even though I haven't checked what's inside the box, I'm honestly quite intrigued to see, but I don't store dahlias that long. So I kind of know that this is going to be quite all right, I guess. On top of here are all the gladioli, so they're gonna stay in here a little longer, because I will plant those directly. And here is the first day, yeah, so let me see. Yeah, looks good. Not mushy, which is always lovely. First shoots appearing already, which is even better. And I hope I can <laughs> I wrote on it what kind they are. And I think I can see it. It says peach. I need to see, I, I think on my phone I still have the variety names. And I've got some photos. I intend on putting photos at the end of the video with what variety I'm actually growing here. And um, in this box there are four different varieties. There is Cafe au lait, Creme de Cassis, there's a red one and the peach one. Um, for those two I still need to look for the name. But the red one and the peach one are the two that I intend on putting in pots already. Maybe the creme de cassis as well. I need to see how much space I actually have. Because I really want to focus on the slope on these colors of like red and peach and purple. And this is why for me it is quite important to have really nice, good, strong looking plants. I can even take a look in a while and see um, if I can divide them. But this is something I need to do in a moment. What I do first is really now check them. Look how they're looking. And then I'll take a bucket of water and put them in the bucket and let them sit there for at least two, three hours probably. Because what I want is that they soak in a lot of the moisture already and then I can plant them. But I can tell you it is a good point to do it now because I could have stored them probably for a month longer, but then it's not ideal. <clears throat> I also have this variety here that I ordered. This is a new one. I've never grown it before. It also sits in this world of like bronze, peachy tones. It's called Babylon bronze, well, bronze. Uh, I've just got one tuber just to see and test how it looks. And <clears throat> that just arrived a while ago. And it looks actually really good. It's not soft, not soggy, nothing. And I'm not going to soak it, I think, because it still looks fairly good and fresh. So this one I'm gonna do, and then I'm also gonna show you in a second, the cannas, this is how they arrive, like in a poly bag with soil in it. And that is a rhizome, so they work a little different. They're not a bulb or anything. And I can already see, I'm gonna give you a close up, um, that there is a little fresh green shoot already appearing. So this is also ideal to put it in a pot now to make sure that they have a very early, lovely start. 
Let me just show you how the tubers look after three months of storing, because as you can see, all I've done to them is wash them so they're clean, wrap them in paper, and off they go into a box, and then I kind of forget about them. I don't even check them throughout the entire winter. And this is how they look now, really lovely. Most of the tubers are really nice and firm. There are a few that are a little shrivelly, but this is the reason why I put them in a bucket of water now. So I think this is gonna bounce back and soak up all the moisture, so I'm not gonna cut it off. What you wanna do is before you pot it, just check if any tubers are showing sign of mold or rot or anything. Anything that is literally squidgy, cut it away because it's no good at all and you'll do more harm than good to it. But here, I don't really think that I need to cut off anything. What I can do with this one though is, this is by the way, one of my favorite varieties that I bought last year. There is a peachy one, a cactus variety. You could see here, I wrote it with two different markers, black and white, and in general, the white marker worked better. So this is how I'm going to continue for the years to come, obviously. But I want to have more of these. When it comes to propagating dahlias, there are two different methods of doing it. You can actually take cuttings now from the, or like you can just cut off a tuber actually. And that's what I'm gonna do now because this is for me the easier method of doing it. What you can do as well is once they're potted up and you have uh, fresh shoots, you could come in and also take cuttings from those shoots and pot them on and propagate it like this. But I think this is just easier and almost safer way because this absolutely won't fail. All I do now is make a decision which tuber I'm going to snip off this entire um, mother plant actually. Obviously I'm not going to take this one here because this is already a little iffy if it's going to work at all. So this one here is a good candidate because it is firm, it's nice, it has a good size, there is a neck here and the important thing is there is an eye. So I'm going to show you up close how that looks. This here is the so-called eye. It kind of swells a little bit and then you see it already starts to shoot out here. So this is where the tuber is going to shoot um, and the fresh growth is appearing. So what I want to do is separate it from the mother bulb and as close to the old stem as possible which is pretty much here. And all I do is I come in with secateurs. You can also do it with a very sharp and clean kitchen knife by the way. Come in here, make sure that I only have that what I want to have. Make a cut, separate it. All right, this one is just on a little string here, but I'll leave it. And this is going to be a brand new plant. I'm not sure if they will make it though. They're still attached to it, but this is perfect. This is, if you do separate your tubers, how they should look like. You have a tuber, you have a neck, and you have an eye. And these are the three important things about it. So I've prepared a bucket with water and all I do now is basically take the tubers, just put them in here, make sure that the entire tubers are completely too warm. No, it's not too warm. Don't use hot water because I don't want to boil them. I'm not making a dahlia soup, obviously. So just put them in there and let them soak and just check. I would say two hours should be enough, but I can tell obviously. So if I, if I check it after two hours and I see that they're still not looking that great, then I just wait a little longer. Oh, hold on a second. There was one day there where actually fresh shoot was already appearing. So this is gonna be a little messy now. But here, can you see there, on the old stem actually, that it is coming back to life. So this is why I always leave a little bit of a stem here, because this is something that I observed already in the past, that sometimes, even though you have the in theory, the idea of like, you have your tuber, the neck and the eye, and it comes back from the eye. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes they really come back from the old stems. So this is why I always leave a little bit of the old stem just to make sure. They're nice and covered now. So all I'm gonna do is I will make a lovely lunch and in two hours I'm gonna see you again. I prepared everything and the tubers, they sat in the water for roughly two and a half to three hours now, I would say. And they're looking good. You can already tell when you touch them that visually they don't really look a lot different because to start with, they weren't looking like that bad. But you can, if you squeeze them, you can tell that they are more firm and already looking better and the, the hand feel and the touch is better of them. So this is looking really nice. I really just inspected them and went in between and just saw, looked at it like, is there anything looking really weird? Is there any sign of mold or anything? And there is not on a single one of them, which is amazing. So the storing process, I was all good and very happy with that. 
So what I do now is basically I just defined um, the pots by the size of the tuber. So obviously this is like quite long and big, so I needed like a longer and bigger pot, while the one that I took a cutting off is quite small, so I could get along with a smaller pot. And I also checked the variety names. So the peach cacti one that I'm growing is called Preference. And what I do is I don't really use labels here because they stay indoors anyway. So I just write all the information I need on the pot with a white marker. So Preference, color is peach, one meter 20 to one meter 50 in height. It was not one meter 50 here, I think it was maybe maybe a meter maybe a meter 20 if with luck um, but they were perfect for cut flower arrangements because preference they had quite long beautiful stems so you could really get in there and what was very intriguing about them was like they really were peach throughout the entire season and then end of October I would say when the temperatures really dropped but they were still producing flowers the flowers they were almost yellowish on a yellow chartreuse kind of side of color. Beautiful as well, but completely different. So that was like one of the intriguing things. The uh, red variety is called Kenora Maker. I was like, what is the name again? I forgot already. And that is one meter to one meter 40 in height, which kind of makes sense. Like one meter, definitely, that was the height it had. What I'm gonna do now is very, very simple actually. So just take the tuber out again, and then I use just a normal potting soil, like a nice mix that you can buy in the garden center. And I already put these pots on one of these like plastic um, crates basically. So when I water them, all the water stays in here. And the nice thing about it as well is that there are a lot of gaps in between here, but some of my uh, plants that I have from sowing right now, like the Rakinus, for example, looks already really nice and good. It's grown to very good size. So at one point, very soon, I need to pot it on as well. So I could just put those pots in between here so I could really utilize the entire space, which is actually a really nice thing. So just two shovels of soil in here. And then what I do is I already use fertilizer here, something I'm not doing for seedlings, but here because they're tuber, so I come in with the um, organic bone chips that I use for everything because I just have really good experience with that. And I think once you already enrich the soil where I intend on growing the tubers, that is definitely better. So just come in here, place the tuber in the pot. Push it down a little bit. In theory, when you plant your dahlia tubers, they should go between 10 to 20 centimeters into the soil, which is an in inches, oh my, let me do my math quickly. 10 centimeters are four inches, so between four or eight inches, basically. And the reason for it is as with many bulbs or tubers, that once the tuber sits a little deeper in the soil, um, they are anchored better because then when wind picks up and comes in, they, um, they don't get, get knocked over easily. I probably stake them, or this year I intend on planting everything a little um, more dense and closer together. So I think this will be all right. And I mean, they are as deep as they are now in the pot, basically. So I think the tuber sits probably, depending on where you measure, obviously, but not, not 10 centimeters even. I don't need to try and fake it now. But I've done the same system last year and I was very successful with that. So none of my dahlias was collapsing or anything. And I grew them back at the slope where wind, when the wind comes from the west, it really hits them hard. So they are quite sturdy actually. Firm it in a little bit. And really cover it up almost to the top. Lovely that I haven't hoovered today yet. So this is something I'm gonna do. And this is all there is, then I'm gonna water them in. So for the next one, I'm just gonna take the phone, uh, place it closer so you get to see up close how I do it with the dahlias. And then also with the canners I've already prepared, I've got six canners waiting here and I'm really excited about that as well. Hope you get to see everything. This is the first time I'm potting anything from this angle. So here's my pot, all the information written on it again. And the tuber, obviously, just take it aside for a second. And now just come in with the soil. It's quite cold because I just took the back from the outside. And I need to buy some soil tonight because if I want to do a little project with you tomorrow that might involve some more soil, I really need to go to the garden center and take care of that situation. So just a good sprinkle, maybe a little more. 
least goodness for the plants, just mix it in a little bit. And since here um, the tuber is fairly small actually, I could really position it easily. What I do is, since I took this from a cutting, this is easy, and you get to see this is where the eye is. Um, I could obviously put it in like this, I can also place it like this with the eye facing upwards. I place it like this normally, uh, just because just because, <laughs> honestly, I really just have good experience doing it like this. And once you dig them up again, tubers normally in the ground, they hardly ever grow like this. Normally they're always more growing like this with the roots downwards, because you can tell where the roots come out. So the roots are really coming like this. So it's better to put it in like that, I feel. This is all I do now, P position it. Get some soil around it, make sure that the soil also sits like in between it because I have three tiny tubers. So I don't want to have like an air pocket or anything in between there. I really want to make sure that the soil is all the way around so they really have the chance and ability to root in fairly well. All right. Oop, there was a mess. See, this is nice when you have like already the plastic crate under it. Okay, firm it in a little more. Make sure it's nice and covered. And I really think now indoors in a sunny position, it'll, it's really gonna go fast. Like probably in two weeks, two, three weeks, I will definitely see first signs of growth. Yeah, that's it for the dahlia. So I'm gonna show you now next how to do it with a canas. So let's pot some canas now. I already put the name on the pot. Canna Monique, 70 centimeters to one meter in height, beautiful. Peachy color, and I think if I remember right, also really lovely foliage. But anyways, you're gonna see at one point later on in the year, and as usual when it comes to packaging, it gives you all the information you need to know. See, peach color, wonderful. Planting depth, that is definitely important, five to 10 centimeters. I tend to go more with five centimeters normally. The height, everything you need to know, wonderful. And I love how they shipped it, because there is a lot of soil in here already. And most of the rhizomes, cannas are rhizomes, look fairly well. So if I would just get in here, I can see what I find. And this is how a canna normally looks like. It looks a lot like ginger, very eerie resemblance. And the nice thing about it is you can already tell here are the first shoots coming out. So you see quite easily on how it should sit in the soil actually, which I think on a canna sometimes it's a little bit like iffy because you never really know what is top and bottom. But here I would definitely say this is how I will place it in here. All I'm gonna do now first is again, come in with a little bit of the bone chips, just sprinkle them, work them in just a tiny bit. So I have like a starting fertilizer going on in here. Place the canna and since there is soil in the bag, all I'm gonna do now, obviously, fill it on top of it. Is it even too much soil? No, I think that is okay. Just perfect, oh lovely, very lovely, fresh, lofty soil. Firm it in, so it's like about five centimeters under the soil now, and all I need to do is water everything in, and that's all there is to the job. So this is what I'm gonna do now, pot up all the cannas and all the rest of the dahlias now.
That is it for today's video. I managed to pot up all the dahlias, all the cannas, everything looks really good. You can't see a thing, everything is like buried, but like at least the tubers and the rhizomes look really good. Like all the rhizomes, they show sign of growth, so I'm really happy about it. And I can tell you what excites me even more is that during this project, the delivery guy came and delivered three raised beds because I went out to the hardware stores. Because initially I thought I'm gonna build the raised beds on my own. I was checking for wood, I was checking for screws, for all the materials, stain, whatever you need. And then I came back home and thought, wow, this is gonna be quite pricey to build a raised bed. And I've done a little bit of an online research and I came across an amazing supplier from Poland and they had just a raised bed, how I envisioned it. The size, the color, nicely black, stained, perfect, made of wood. And I was like, hell no, I'm not gonna build something on my own if I find for a really good, reasonable price exactly what I was looking for. So three of them were delivered today and they're bound to go to the slope, to the top layer, which is like a nice booster for me now to really focus on that area again and make it work, make it happen, prepare the area so I can set up those raised beds. Even though at the moment I'm focusing a little more on the top layer of the garden, the main layer, everything is cut back by now, which makes me so happy. Like even the front garden, everything stripped back to the bare bones. So I can really focus on introducing more spring beauty to the garden. Because I mean, you know the feeling, I'm sure. When you come back home, you love to be welcomed by a beautiful sight, and so do I, obviously. So this is one of my future projects that I intend on doing is tackle again the main entrance of the house and just introduce some lovely spring blooms and just make it a little cheerful and happy again. And I think once I'm done with like my projects here in the top garden, I really want to focus at the uh, slope again. So then my focus is going to shift a little bit. One last thing that I completely forgot to mention, by the way, is actually where dahlias and cannas originate, because this is also a good indicator on what kind of conditions they like to thrive in. So dahlias, they originate in Mexico, and cannas, they're from South America, like from Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, and I think even Argentina, if I'm not wrong. So both of them are not tender, and this is why you need to store them. So they cannot withstand heavy frost or anything. Light frost is easy, um, happened to my cannas on my balcony already and they made it through a light frost but not weeks and days of heavy frost. They love to thrive in a nice warm climate and in full, full sun, especially dahlias like to bask in sun. Cannas, they also love a sunny area. They prefer a little more moist as well than dahlias do, which is also something that you need to know. But yeah, when it comes to all of that anyways, in probably two and a half to three months from now, I'm gonna take you out to the garden and then we plant them finally. I can't wait for that to happen. But this is still a little time to come up until then, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I just wanna say thank you so much for watching and I would love to welcome you in my garden on one of my future videos very soon again. Take care, bye.